Hello everyone. So I've been getting a lot of questions and a bit of discussion around my HON3 conversion on the Bachmann 45T chassis. Um, what you see running around this little loop of HON3 track here is actually just the bare chassis with the uh, regauge trucks. And what we're going to dive into today is how I was able to build that. Um, this has been a pretty lengthy process. This truck over here represents the 22nd revision in order to get this thing actually running right. And we'll dive into some of the reasons for that. Uh, Bachman definitely used a little bit of work on their gear train design with this model. Out of the box, it runs okay. There's definitely some tight spots and some clicking. Um, and I was able to resolve all of that through a little bit of uh, gearbox refinement. So that said, uh, let's, let's dive into this project and I'll talk you through it. So the story begins with Bachman bringing out these 45 ton GE side rod uh, switchers. And when these things were first released, I just thought, man, there's, there's got to be a way to convert these to HON3. Because really, who doesn't want an HON3 center cab side rod GE switcher? So, uh, you know, um, as Train World tends to do, they were blowing these out and I picked up a bunch of them to play with and uh, started hacking on them to figure out how we narrow these down to HON3. All right, so our fundamental challenge is we want to regauge this truck to HON3. So if we pull out our handy dandy NMRA standards gauge and we look at the wheel set, we see that that's quite a bit of difference. And if we take that same gauge and we look at the body of the truck, we see that the body of the truck is actually wider than the HON3 standard. So that's going to be a challenge. We can't simply re-gauge these wheels. <clears throat> We're going to have to completely narrow the truck, and that's where this gets complicated. All right, so I have this partially disassembled truck here. Um, excuse me, it's missing a few pieces already that we'll get to. Um, but basically, you snap this cover plate off the bottom, very carefully, these tend to like to crack in this area here. And that exposes the gear train on the bottom, which allows you to pop these wheels out, which uh, obviously you can see they're very much a snap fit. Um, once your wheels are out, you can pull these side frames off. You know, and you're left with the truck body. Obviously, uh, the counterweights and rods are already missing off of these. I didn't want to wrestle with those. The other thing to note is this is the worm. This is actually retained inside the die cast uh, motor chassis. And this is a snap fit onto here. So this is the pivot and the worm housing. This is a terrible design. Uh, what's happening with this is that the worm is actually pivoting on top of the worm gear and it's also got a really just unstable relationship which causes problems. Um, it does accelerate wear in the worm gear. Um, it, it also again it's you know it's unstable so you get some erratic running issues with this. So we're going to talk about that a little bit as we move through this because that's one of the things that I had to work with. But anyway, these just snap apart, so you would just pull these trucks right out of the body of the uh, the body of the chassis. All right, so I built us a nice exploded diagram in one of the trucks here. I've got everything blown apart. Uh, where to start? So let's go ahead and start with I guess let's just follow the powertrain through. Um, this is your worm. 
which sits in its carrier housing here. And as we talked about, that is also the truck pivot. So not the best design, but we'll live with it. This is the worm gear right here, and that drives a reduction from here to here. So uh, this is a, a two-stage setup with the worm and this reduction. And then the second stage then drives these idlers here, which then drive the gears on these trucks. So um, you've got the pins laid out here that came out of the truck body. This is your plastic truck body. Oops. And just looking around the parts pile here, these are the brass contacts that go up against the back of the wheels, so they mount in this area here. And then they're sandwiched with this hard brass plate here using these screws. And these little tangs right here actually reach up into the die cast body and touch up against a pair of spring-loaded uh, contacts and that's how the power is actually transmitted from the truck to the die cast body and then to the DCC chip. Um, this is something that I actually ended up removing in my modifications and went with a hard wire. This actually turned out to be kind of a, a bad system. Uh, it seemed like grease and oil and dirt were always getting between the spring contact and this thing and it was, uh, you know, it had poor continuity. So, that said, um, here's a counterweight. So you can see here, I've actually somewhat pulled one of these drivers apart. And yeah, these are, these are the counterweights pulled off. There's actually a, a D-shaped hole that fits this D-shaped axle. And that's how you get your quartering. Uh, there's actually little bronze bushings here. That one is stuck. There we go. There's little bronze bushings here that actually snap into the bottom of this thing. And it's a really tight snap fit. Uh, it's really hard getting these out. I think this is Delrin. But overall, it's not a terrible truck design. Um, my biggest gripe really is the, the, the pivoting worm, which, you know, I guess with the, the loads that we're carrying, probably isn't the end of the world, but from an academic standpoint, this is not a great design. Um, the other thing is that there seems to be too tight of a relationship in the reduction and these gears actually click a little bit. So that's something else that I worked on with my uh, refinements was, was fixing the gear mesh problem so that it was smoother. But that's basically it. That's, what, uh, that's what's inside the truck. All right, so let's zoom in here and talk about the conversion parts. So first thing that you're gonna notice is this, which is a 3D printed truck body. Um, as I mentioned, this is my 22nd revision to this thing. Part of this journey has actually been uh, my introduction to 3D printing. This, was, this project was actually one of my earliest projects with 3D printing was creating the original conversion parts. And as my printers have gotten better and more accurate, um, I've had to go back and revise parts to compensate, but there's there's been a lot of other changes along the way and also improvement in materials that's allowed me to do some things that I couldn't do before. But I just want to make a point really quick. So here's the original truck body. Here's the new truck body. It's substantially narrower. There's there's really no way to just go ahead and regauge your uh, regauge your wheels and get this to work. You really have to create a narrow truck body. So some differences between mine and the Bachman one, if you look, there's a slot in here, which is kind of a spring feature that allows you to snap these things in and out of the chassis. Um, with the Delrin, that works just fine. With 3D printed SLA, that was kind of problematic. It's also a thing that likes to creep over time. So I went ahead and eliminated that feature, and I, I don't have any trouble snapping the, uh, uh, the worm housing right onto that. The other thing that you'll notice is with this one, 
it's kind of sloppy. There's a lot of play. And that ended up being kind of problematic from a, a running consistency standpoint. So with mine, it's actually a, a tighter fit. It still has, in terms of uh, its ability to rotate easily, it's not a problem. But it's held more firmly fore and aft. The This guy here is actually able to shift back and forth even when it's in the uh, snapped into the chassis and that created all sorts of erratic running problems. So uh, actually made some improvements here. I've also adjusted the gear mesh. So these holes here have all been incrementally adjusted, you know, just uh, a few thousandths of an inch at a time to get a good mesh. So anyway, that's the adapter body or the, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> Regaging body, I don't want to call that thing. But um, getting to the axles, we'll talk about this really quick. So this is one of the untouched axles. This is a regaged axle. So if I can get these, basically what you end up doing is pushing the wheel sets in and cutting down the D-shaped uh, end shafts. So you can all see that. The one challenge that creates is you start to expose knurling in different places. And so with the uh, bronze bearings, I'm trying to do this looking through the camera here, um, you actually have to put this in a lathe and open this up so that you've got clearance so that you're not bottoming out on your knurling here. So that's that's kind of one of the things you got to do. Um, I had originally tried to cut down the uh, factory counterweights and they're so difficult to try to fixture and center. I gave up on that idea and ended up just 3D printing these guys and honestly they look better. Um, it's so much easier. And then last but not least, the other thing that you've got to do is to cut these gears down to fit into the narrowed body. Hopefully this is staying in focus. This camera's not so great. So that's about it. Um, but those are, those are really kind of the parts that you need in order to do this. And then putting it back together and fine-tuning it all uh, takes a little bit of work. But uh, we'll get some shots of this mechanism next and show you how it is actually running. Alright, so yes, and if you're wondering, this thing's just been running around this loop of track the whole time we've been talking. All right, well, uh, thanks for tuning in and checking out the project. Hopefully this uh, gives everyone a little bit better idea of what's actually involved in uh, this HON3 conversion on the 45 tonner. And uh, make sure to stay tuned. I've got more coming up on the box cab project that this thing fits inside of. And uh, we'll see you guys on YouTube.